Welcome to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast, your guide to future tech trends and innovation in a language you understand. Now, over to your host, Neil Hughes. Welcome to another episode of the Tech Blog Writer Podcast. Now, one of the things I'm most proud of in recording this show is that we cover stories from all walks of life and all over the world and how technology is not only bringing people together but also creating opportunities for each and every person listening and that one thousand dollar smartphone in your pocket is capable of so much more than just endlessly scrolling down how about putting it to better use changing your life building your own business community or even launching your own event does that sound far-fetched Well, today I want to inspire you to think differently. Today's guest was like so many other young mums out there in being faced with having to return to work after her maternity leave. But she actually turned to a host of free online tools to help her launch her own business and live her life by her rules. Now, she now has an event coming up in Manchester and London here in the UK. But wherever you're listening, I think it highlights the art of the possible. So buckle up and hold on tight as I beam your ears all the way to Essex here in the UK so we can speak with Lindsay Fish, founder and CEO of Mums Enterprise Roadshow. So a massive warm welcome to the show, Lindsay. Can you tell the listeners a little about who you are and what you do? Yes, of course. Hello, everybody. My name is Lindsay Fish. I'm the founder and CEO of a company called Mums Enterprise. Um, myself, along with my business partner, Lucy Chaplin, we are the organisers of the UK's only child-friendly, flexible work and business show. And it's intended to help mums retrain, start a business or, or find flexible work. Now, you're selling yourself a little bit short there because you've already won the Young Entrepreneur of the Year a few years ago. Uh, and your first event business was nominated for the most promising new business at Local Business Awards. And with over 18 years experience in events, you're now dedicated to running Mums Enterprise Limited. And you're the driving force behind this this business, which organises the Mums Enterprise Roadshow that you've mentioned there. But this is, like you said, the UK's only child-friendly, flexible work and business show with its offline offering becoming more and more comprehensive each year. So you've been on a fantastic journey. So can I take you back to where it all began, where your passion and love for events started at the tender age of 16, I think, where you completed an apprenticeship for a startup exhibition instead of going down that traditional uh, further education route? I mean, what made you take that path less travelled? Yes, well, for me, I kind of knew when I was 16, you know, coming to the end of school, you, you know, nobody really knows what they want to do. And I felt, I don't know what I want to do yet. So going to university and picking a topic and a subject would just be a waste of time for me. You know, and I also learned better doing things, um, getting stuck in rather than academically. I I much prefer to get stuck in and and roll my sleeves up to learn that way. And of course, I, I, you know, it'd be nice to earn a bit of money as well at 16 rather than (laughs) getting into uh, just a load of debt. So that's when I started to look for apprenticeships. It was obviously through a careers advisor at school. And lucky for me, I held out. I mean, I could have been working just for a retail shop, which, you know, you just cheap labor, really. But I I held out for a really interesting apprenticeship placement. And thankfully for me, it was for an exhibition organizer. And and that's where it all started. And that literally caught the event bug. And I haven't got rid rid of it since. It's funny, isn't it, how we're all completely different? Because Mm. growing up, I took a similar path to yourself. I had zero interest in school, college, Mm. university stuff. And I thought, I just went down my own path. And it all seemed to work out in the end. And uh, it's funny, if I look back and join up the dots now, even though I ended up in IT for 20 years, I've still gone back to doing what I wanted to do when I was 16, which was kind of like recording radio shows or or writing for a living. But back then I was told, no, no, you've got to go to university five years to do that. But now technology Mm. allows you to do anything, doesn't it? Exactly, exactly. And it is funny how you, it all works out, doesn't it? I mean, at that time, I didn't know I wanted to be an exhibition organiser at all. It wasn't even on my radar. But I was just lucky enough to come across a fantastic placement that has, has been my professional passion ever since. So if we then fast forward to 2014, and like so many women, you had to face that horrible conundrum of having to return to work after your maternity leave. And once again, you chose an alternative route and leveraged technology and social media to help bring your company, Little Fish Management, to life. I mean, there could be a lot of people listening in a very similar predicament to yourself there that could equally follow in your footsteps. So can you tell me about how you came up with that idea for the Mums Enterprise Roadshow, launching your own company 
and finding the time to make it a huge success as a mother as well. Well, still, it's a, still a huge, huge mountain. You know, you never, you never really get to where you want. There's always a challenge. But for me, yeah, the, the idea for Mums Enterprise did come after launching that first business, Little Fish Event Management. Um, events have always been my passion, and that was the one thing I felt I could sell as a service. So I started off organising events for other corporate companies. So the kind of events I always do are corporate exhibitions, you know, um, events, not not weddings or parties, more more the corporate side. So that's what I started doing for other companies. And then because I was a, a new mum at that time as well, I could hear all around me, the, the mums all around me having that same fear, the same problem, the same challenges about work and what they should do. Um, and then that's when it came to me, um, the, the idea for the Mums Enterprise Roadshow. And there's an event in this. I thought, I've been in business a year now. I've been able to do it. And I wanted to, you know, help women do the same, really. And you really have done just that. And I, but I often say that we all have so many opportunities now because we've got mm. that phone in our, in our pocket and a laptop and an internet connection and we can make anything happen. And previous generations just didn't have that kind of opportunity. So can I ask, how much of a role did technology, social media, etc., have in making that process easier for you? Because I think as a mum as well, you're... Your time is uh, obviously quite uh, stringent as well, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, technology was a massive, massive plus for me. It wouldn't have been possible to do either business without it. And also, we're a flexible business. You know, we, we all work from home. I work from home. We're remote. We're flexible working around the clock. Um, and technology has just been so important because it makes it so cheap. So I've started both businesses with zero investment. We've still never had any investors. Uh, that is a that is a struggle, but it's also been helped because you don't, you know, to start off, you don't need a lot of money because you have got the technology there. So you have got access to thousands and millions of people through social media. You can organize yourself very well and um, share documents um, you know, through, you know, communications, through things like Skype, sharing documents through Google Doc, which we use, uh, Google for work. That's so important because I can access information on my, you know, my mobile phone out and about. And also my business partners and colleagues can access exactly the same information from wherever they are. Um, so without technology, um, I wouldn't would not have been able to set up either of these businesses. That, that is a fact. I love how you uh, mentioned there that you had zero investment because I think that's something else that holds a lot of young mums back that they'll be thinking, I could do all this, but oh, I haven't got the money to get myself up and running. But there are a lot of really useful free tools out there that are incredibly mm. easy to use as well, aren't they? Absolutely. And for a whole business, you can set yourself up. So CRM for sales, um, accounting software to, you know, to help you with the cash flow and keeping, you know, getting your invoices out there, marketing, sales. And of course, the most the most obvious one is just research to Google something, um, find templates for business plans, marketing plans, or you know, just find the customers that you need. Google their contact details. So it's just it's just so essential now. You know, we've got access to the whole world. Um, it's just you know how we use it. I think is 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 the key thing. Absolutely. So once you've set that ball in motion and you've got that idea for the roadshow, how long did it take until you were brave enough to set that date in stone for the first one? <laughs> well, do you know what? It's really funny. Today, it's just been on my LinkedIn, is, uh, it's three years today that I set up Mums Enterprise and started, you know, when the idea came three years ago today, which is crazy. So from March, I had the idea in March, got it all on paper, you know, from my brain into something, started doing the research. Then I went to my business partner, Lucy, to do the brand. And then, so then we got our website live in September uh, 2015 but we set the first event dates for June 2016 so we gave ourselves a good a good a good length of time over, over a year from when I had the idea to, to actually do the first show I give myself plenty of time <laughs> <laughs> uh, but what were the biggest challenges that you came across and how did you overcome them over that uh, 12 months well, we've already touched on it, and the, you know, money money is a huge, huge factor of anything. You need it's it's like a chicken and egg. You need money 
to be seen and by found by people. But if you haven't got the money, what do you do? Um, so it's bootstrapping and a bit of hustling. And I mean that in a positive hustle. Contact, you know, on, on Twitter, message people who are perfect for your for whatever your project is. That's what I was doing. I was just reaching out to everybody. I knew what kind of exhibitors I needed. I knew what how where the revenue was going to come from. Um, so you just bootstrap and you do pretty much everything everything yourself, you know. You can't hire and outsource loads of tasks. You've just got to learn new skills and get stuck in, really. And did you find that a lot of your work was you were able to complete, you know, when your child had gone to bed and but those hours from... I don't know, uh, Gary Vaynerchuk yeah. always says, you know, everybody works hard, everybody got family commitments and a, a day job, but he always says that you, people can work from seven or eight o'clock at night till two in the morning. I know everyone mm-hmm. can't do that, but do you find yourself having to adjust your clock around your, your work and your family commitments? Yes, now definitely. So at the beginning, my Molly, she's four now, but she was, you know, only coming up to one at that time. So um, to begin with, for Little Fish, I worked around molly with molly here at home um took her out to the park um but it was really funny because i used to sit near a cafe and steal their internet connection (laughs) while she was playing on the grass so i could just be you know get tinkering with my website and stuff so uh, but now yeah so they actually do go in childcare. i had a baby last june which is crazy i don't know how it happens (laughs) with two little babies but yes, and you work whenever you can. So I'm lucky that they can go to childcare, which is my personal choice. I know a lot of mums can't do that and don't want to do that. Um, so yeah, it's getting into a new routine of doing things, a new way of doing it. Um, nine to five doesn't work. So you set times and get in a routine that does, which is, yep, for me, mornings, whilst the kids are at school, and then evenings. Fantastic. Now, what advice would you give to a mum listening to us talk now that could be located anywhere in the world that has her own Mm. idea, wants to take advantage of opportunities that technology offers and launch their own business? And maybe I also warn against some of those multi-level marketing schemes out there, which I think you came up with a, a great phrase for that. You said it equals mums lose money. I mean, you might want to talk <laughs> yeah. about that a little as well, because I think a lot of people might be tempted to go down that route and they need to avoid yeah. it. Yeah, so we, our exhibitions, the Mums Enterprise Roadshow has become MLM free, which is multi-level marketing free, which are these brands who say you join a business, a national business, and then you basically just have to buy product and sell product. So we we don't believe that that is a opportunity that's uh, real. I think 99.9% of people who sign up to those things either lose money or, you know, don't make hardly anything, even their money back. Um, so we just decided for the integrity of our events that we just don't want, don't believe those opportunities are real. So, yep, my first piece of uh, advice would be to sidestep those. If it seems too good to be true, if you have to put money in first, don't do it. And otherwise, there's a couple of things that I would suggest to do. Not tech related and then tech related. So research is a must. You need to understand if it's a business idea you've got. Don't just ask family and friends. They'll be really obviously on your side, and that, but that's not a true answer. So ask strangers. Do a do a remote surveys. Get on the street. Ask strangers. But then yes, do make take advantage of all the technology that's there. Um, so one thing I found useful when I was getting my business off the ground is there's a lot of Twitter hashtag hours. Um, local to your region and these would be worldwide you know it's where a group of people go onto twitter at a certain time on a certain day if you tweet using hashtag particular hashtag whatever it is you'll be you'll be a part of a community then of people for that hour um but then also find those um open source technology um apps if you like we use asana which is a free project management tool which is blimmin brilliant really love it but there's also free crm tools like insightly and hubspot to make sure you know you can keep on your sales and keep track of them so oh i actually published a blog actually which is our 10 top 10 tech apps that we use for our flexible working so i'll make sure we share that as well excellent well i'll put that in the show notes to this episode just so anyone listening can get hold of them nice and easily Uh, One other thing I wanted to ask you is the event industry can be very slow to adapt to change. And I also noticed that many events are no longer just about the audience inside the building, but those tuning in from anywhere in in the world that can't make it into that venue, 
beer streams on YouTube and things like that because events are now busting out of the venues. People tune into those images and videos online. I mean, how do you see technology transforming the event industry? Are, are there any big trends that you're noticing each year? Well, I always, always get contacted by event app companies everybody wants to sell me an app um and up until now i haven't i am not i'm not going to do it just yet because i don't believe at this moment in time for our business it would you know it'd be the worth the commercial outlay i guess but when it comes to events there's always always going to be a need for the face-to-face face-to-face interaction which is why events are still so popular um but i believe that it's going to be the experience at the show itself which may change so yes there will be apps where people can message each other have conversations with each other book meetings with each other but then obviously virtual reality and augmented reality i think is going to come into play to add to the on on the day experience um but also what i'm seeing with events is this feeling of community like a one day event isn't enough to help these people or the audience um so community is 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 a massive thing for events now where people want to connect with who else is attending that event um before the show and after so so definitely technology to support that is definitely becoming more popular Absolutely. And there really does seem to be a real community online that then leads to those events. I mean, do you have a big following on things like Instagram and YouTube yourself? Uh, We focus on Twitter and Facebook, really. Instagram, we need to get a bit more hot on because there's loads of mums over there. And YouTube, no, do you know, we we need to start doing more with video. That is a must. I mean, we record all of our events and we've we've actually last year started to record all the workshops as well. So yeah, it's, it's it's there's a big there's a big challenge ahead for us really with regards to making sure we keep up with technology, and you know because obviously it will help us at the end of the day. Yeah, I mean I must admit video is something that I've not done. I, ne- I know I need to do it, and I've mm. read recently that YouTube is the number two search engine in the world now for SEO wow. purposes, which makes me think mm. I need to do something on video. But there's just so many plates you have to spin yeah. in this world, isn't there? Well, that's it. It's, yeah, you, you, you can't do everything, so I suppose you need to pick your outlet. <laughs> so what's next for you guys? Is there anything else you can share with us today? Well, yeah, it's, it's funny because technology is actually our future. So we actually did a startup incubator with News UK back in October. And one of the things that was highlighted to us, and, and I suppose our blinkers uh, came off, is that the Mums, en- Mums Enterprise is a huge, huge opportunity, and live events isn't going to cut it. So we'll always do our live events. They're going to be part of what Mums Enterprise does, the Mums Enterprise Roadshow, forever. Um, but we also now need to create more of a digital hub so we're a facilitator. So we don't sell any services. We don't, you know, we're not trying to sell anything ourselves. We just provide a platform for brands to showcase themselves who can help this audience, help parents, mums, dads, um, whoever's looking for a kind of some flexible work or business opportunity. Um, so we are now upgrading our website and, and to create more of a digital hub so we can direct people to the support, know-how, tools and, and opportunities um, all year round. And video will become a part of that. We're going to have a video uh, library um, of masterclasses and how-tos, opportunity listings um but also other events as well because we know it's not just our event that's amazing there's so many out there so um we're gonna we're gonna be sharing everybody else's events too so yeah using technology to help people every day of the year basically is that is our plan next well i'm sure there's gonna be a lot of people listening all over the world that are fascinated by your story and wanting to find out more so can you just remind them of your website url your social channels and also how they can reach your team with any questions about our conversation today yes of course so our website is mumsenterprise.events and that's mums m-u-m mumsenterprise.events that's our website you can get us on any social media instagram twitter facebook using at mums enterprise and yeah to reach us you just you can email us mission control at mumsenterprise.events and we've got two events coming up this year which is manchester on the 20th of june and london on the 28th and 29th of september and they're all free to for visitors to attend Excellent. I love how you've been on this inspirational journey, but then you've used these free tech tools to create your own business, your own events, 
and ultimately your own community as well. And I think it's a great example of technology uh, actually bringing people together and that's when it works best. So a big thank you for sharing that story with us today. No problem. Thanks for having me. What I love about Lindsay's story is that she's used her expertise and experience in the event industry, all from her time in her day job, and then used that to launch her own business to transform her life. Best of all, she used free tech tools that are available to each and every one of you listening to build her own community, her own business, and then take it on the road with a hugely successful business and roadshow too. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that, does it? So if you're planning on following in her footsteps or want to find out more information, please reach out to her because I know she'll point you in the right direction. And I love the fact that a conversation between two people on a cold, rainy day here in the UK could inspire and empower women or indeed anyone listening anywhere in the world. How cool is that? Remember, we are also approaching episode 500 and I want to hear about your favourite guests, your favourite stories along the way. And I want to play your voicemails on episode 500 and hopefully also write a book about the biggest lessons that we've learned from these guests over the last few years. And you can help me do all that by just leaving me a voice message. You can do that by going to techblogwriter.co.uk slash podcast. If you do it on a a laptop rather than your phone, you should get a nice little box there that just you hit record and then it emails at me. But if that sounds too technical, don't worry. You can also email me at techblogwriter at outlook.com or tweet me at Neil C. Hughes. Now, I'm going to walk off into the sunset now with a warm, fuzzy feeling in my belly because for me, today was a real feel-good episode on how tech works best when it brings people together. And for me, it's a great example of how tech works best when it brings people together. And what a perfect note to end on. So thanks for listening. And until next time, don't be a stranger. Thanks for listening to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast. Until next time, remember, technology is best when it brings people together.